Hello everybody and welcome to another show of Revit Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Quetelier. I am an architect, a BIM specialist and the founder of the website RevitPure.com. The goal of Revit Pure Live is to help you, hopefully, to become a better Revit user. Sometimes the show is done all by myself, but sometimes, like today, I do bring other BIM experts to the show so they can share their knowledge with you. Uh, before introducing my guest, uh, a few things to mention. Uh, if you're not familiar with Revit Pure, uh, we have a learning website for Revit where we tackle topics ranging from beginners to advanced. Uh, if you want to get started with our offerings, you can go to revitpure.com slash pamphlets. You can also find a link in the description and download the whole pamphlet collection. These are free PDF guides breaking down Revit's most confusing topics. And we've started releasing these pamphlets in 2016. And you can see the whole collection that we've released since. Uh, basically about Re Revit most confusing stuff like coordinates, uh, scope boxes, and also talking about some add-ins like PyRivet, which I love, talking about railings, virtual reality. So all of this is free. Just go to revitpure.com slash pamphlets to download the entire collection. Uh, this is the, the penultimate uh, episode of this season and next episode will be a special show where I'll be all by myself and you know usually on this show we talk about more advanced topics um, yeah advanced BIM workflows with BIM experts and I figured it would be interesting to do something for beginners so perhaps for some of you who are more advanced uh, you were maybe past that level but if you have beginners you're working with or colleagues uh, maybe send them the link to this next show which should be interesting for them so the, the title of the show is 24 beginner tips and strategies i'll mostly be talking about how to start a project in revit the good way because uh, i see so much projects that are getting started and they miss up at the beginning and then sometimes it's hard to come back from a, a bad decisions made early on so I'll be giving some uh, tips to get a project started correctly. Hold on just a minute here. So I'll be introducing my guest. Today's guest is Jeffrey A. Pinero, most commonly known as the Revit Kid. Jeff is an architect who graduated with a Master of Architecture from the University of Hartford in Connecticut. Uh, he has worked as an architect for Fletcher Thompson until 2014 before joining the Turner Construction Company as the regional VDC manager. He is also an adjunct professor at the University of Hartford and spoke at multiple national BIM conferences. To most people, Jeff is widely known for his learning content creation as the Revit Kid and more recently with the BIM After Dark community. Jeff is a legend in the BIM learning community and started his blog more than 12 years ago. In this episode, instead of the usual Revit presentation, I wanted to learn more about Jeff's creative process when creating teaching material. Uh, so welcome to the show, Jeff. How's it going? Hey, hey, Nick. Thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Thanks for the bio. That was that was super formal of you. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't even know some of those things about myself. Yeah. <laughs> I those things about myself. That's really funny. Yeah, I Thanks hope I didn't me. get that's anything great. wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. That was all. Uh, I, I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all correct. I don't know. <laughs> it's I have it's been a while since I've written a bio. I've been like copying and pasting my same bio like a yeah, thousand yeah. times. So <laughs> thanks yeah, for having yeah. me, man. This is awesome. I'm I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to have you. So uh, first, congratulations. You just had a baby daughter like two weeks ago. Was two, you... Actually, just three now. Just three weeks oh, ago. So yeah, yeah. Born in late May. Yep. Yep. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been, uh, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, probably part of the reason why I can understand the bio is my brain is a little mushy right now, but <laughs> <laughs> I think you can understand. I, I, you have two, two young kids, right? So yeah, I think you yeah, get it. <laughs> mine are uh, five and two now. So I'm awesome. I'm a little past the, the, the worst. Oh, so we'll have to connect separately then about uh, mm -hmm. having a three-year-old and a newborn at the same time and, and some of the strategies that, that you uh, you implemented to, to manage that. Yeah, <laughs> I would say I, th I think I was lucky that my oldest one was, uh, it was pretty rough the, the first mm. year. She didn't sleep much at all. Mm. <laughs> so, and so I'm happy that it was for the first baby, for, mm -hmm. for the second one. That I don't know if, uh, what's the, the sleep situation has been like for you. Mm. 
Has it been uh, not, not too bad? No, not no, it's bad. Not, not too bad. It, what, what to expect? Uh, the biggest issue is the the toddler. Um, mm. You know, when 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 she's napping, he's he thinks it's fun to you know poke her uh, and wake yeah. her up. You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, otherwise it's it's all good fun. <laughs> yeah, three years old are not always easy. It's yeah, it's been for my oldest one. It's been the the. I don't want to say the worst age, but the most difficult age. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, this is now the the Revit parenting show. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> the BIM parents. <laughs> BIM, yeah. BIM sure. parents. <laughs> anyway, oh, congrats. So, so you've been taking Thank a you. break from uh, for streaming during that period. That's right. Yeah. So um, uh, and and I saw quite a few of the regulars from BIM After Dark Live on the chat. So mm -hmm. hey guys, nice to see you again. I missed mm -hmm. missed everyone. Um, yeah. I think uh, the end of May or end of April. I, I forgot when it was. I I took 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 a break. Episode fifty seven. I think it was. Um, you know, we went every week for for over a year. Um, took a break for a little while, and I plan on coming back. I'm sure you're going to come back as a guest. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. uh, probably at the end of the summer, and we're going to come back with a bang. I got a lot of ideas. So. Oh, just, yeah. Just taking, okay. taking it easy. I mean, you, you know as much as me uh, mm -hmm. how much work this can be to set up. So I wanted to give myself a little bit of time to, to enjoy the family. Oh, OK. Yeah. So are you taking the whole summer off? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking probably probably August time maybe uh, is when I'll start coming back. But we'll see. Time will tell. Keep an eye out. <laughs> All right. All right. So I do have a, a list of questions for you, actually. Sure, um, man. Let's do I'm, it. I've got prepared. All right. No, yeah, man, well, a whole list, a whole list. I, I do have. I thought you were just going to wing it with some sticky notes, man. <laughs> <laughs> 15 questions. So, yeah, the, the first right. thing I wanted to talk to you about. So you started your blog in February 2009. Is that right? That's right. February 12th, 2009. I remember the date. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> and you were in college back then? I was. I was in um I was, it was first 2009, so it was, no, actually, actually it wasn't first year. That was a couple of years into, into college, I think. Um, yeah, it, it was, I was in college. And so 2009 was probably Revit 2008, I think, was the version we were using at the time. And, um, and yeah, uh, uh, at that time, and, and maybe some folks that, that have been around long enough in the Revit blogosphere and, and I don't want to say social media because I don't think social media was a term back then, but um, uh, the, Revit blogs were huge back then. Like everyone, everyone had a Revit blog at that point in time. And, um, you know, I followed a couple of guys that like even, you know, Steve Stafford and some of the guys that are still around, but, um, a few that, that don't really blog as much anymore. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I never, I never thought it would be what it is, but, uh, but, uh, it, 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 it grew to, to what you see today. So, <laughs> yeah. And why did you decide to start a blog? What was your main motivation at first? So, uh, as you mentioned, I was in, I was in school, so I, I went to school for architecture. I'm, I'm, I'm an architect. And, um, at the time, uh, version 2008, I think was the first version of Revit that, um, you were able to render natively in mm -hmm. the software. I think it was 2008. And, um, that sort of opened the door, uh, in studio for me, um, to, to using Revit as a tool for, for everything, you know, before that it was a mix of CAD and. 3d max or some anything modeling in 3d and then like a a, a viz render type of program um i don't even know if v-ray was it was huge then but there was a lot of tools being used to make renderings and obviously for architecture students you know studio presentation graphics is huge mm -hmm. um so when when uh the firm i worked for at the time um we decided to to sort of dive into revit and learn it when i realized that i could do my floor plan sections elevations and renderings all in the same program I was like, this is awesome. This is a game changer for studio. And so I started using it in studio. Um, and, and obviously, you know, other, my fellow students uh, noticed and were asking me a ton of questions about, about it. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I did, because I, I also started getting the same questions over and over again. So the blog itself was actually a way for me to answer the questions. Um, and then when I got the same one, I would just send a link to that answer. <laughs> so the oh. blog actually started as a way for me to stop answering the same questions over and over again from fellow students. Um, oh, and so, then so it, it was, uh, oh, you made them for your fellow colleagues. Yeah. The college. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So my, my studio classmates, you know, uh, if they asked me, Hey, how did you, uh, you know, build this door or make this door swing or something like that? You know, I would make a video for it, uh, or, or even sometimes I don't know if it was videos at the time, maybe it was videos, pretty sure uh, screencasts because YouTube wasn't even really a big thing mm -hmm. then. Um, and, and I would make the video and, and this way, when someone asked me the same question, I would just send them the link to that previous video. And that's sort of how it all began, um, without 
ever thinking of what it would turn into 12 years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, and I think I was lucky. I was lucky in the fact that um, the timing of it, uh, without even knowing it, um, you know, there was sort of uh, uh, in front of the wave uh, of, of Revit taking traction um, and also blogs and, and tutorials and videos and all that stuff. So um, I think in, to that extent to where it's grown today, um, I think I, I was lucky enough to, to, to have started it that early so that, you know, when, when, you know, we are where we are today, there's already this backlog of content that I've produced, um, you know, that sort of put me as the, uh, in authority in the, in the mm -hmm. space basically. Yeah. And d does some of your really old content still get a lot of views today? It does. So yeah, it's okay. hard, it's hard, it, it's hard to some of it. Some of it, I mean, there's definitely a lot of views still, um, you know, that was pre ribbon some of my first content too. Um, so, so, you know, Revit looked a little different, um, you know, yeah, yeah, sure, at this yeah. point in time. So I'm not sure how useful some of it is for people, but, um, there are some that still get hit. Um, and then the screencast stuff, I still keep, I'm still paying for screencast to keep those videos hosted and people are still landing on them. A lot of the, a lot of the really, really early content I have actually, um, I think redone some of those techniques in the newer versions so that. Um, it makes a little more sense because anyone who, who looks at the new Revit and has never seen the old Revit UI. Uh, it's probably extremely challenging to convert the two in your mind. <laughs> yeah. And are you still using the, the same blog platform as you originally did yes. with the, the Blogspot? Yes, unfortunately. Um, so uh, anyone anyone who cares uh, about design and, and, and internet UI and stuff, I apologize the fact that I'm still on Blackspot. But <laughs> um, anyone who, who has also, um, if you've ever attempted to convert a, a blog platform to another one, um, especially when you have 1,200 posts on that blog, um, it's a challenge. And so uh, I, I, try, I attempted to do it and um, I failed. Um, I, I will admit it. I, I attempted to convert it to WordPress. So um, the blog, it, it's all still on Blogspot um, um, uh, as far as the actual blog content is concerned. Um, luckily, Google hasn't completely killed Blogspot and they're actually, they've actually updated it a little bit, which is kind of funny. And I can tell you the theme that's on Blogspot, um, it doesn't look like a lot of Blogspot stuff because I spent a lot of time mm -hmm. um, finding a theme and, and butchering the hell out of it to get it to look generally what I wanted it to look like. Um, and even that to now it's so temperamental that I'm terrified to even attempt changing it again. <laughs> All right. Let, let me see if, uh, there we go. We can see uh, your blog now. So it means that if I scroll down here and I click on older articles at some point, I'll reach mm -hmm. your very first entry. Yes, you will. <laughs> and did you say you have 1200 posts? There, there are, are, I can actually tell you exactly how many there are, if you'd like, just, just for fun. Um, there are 1,298 blog posts. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> yes. And, and of those 60%, I think are considered Revit tutorials. So that's a lot, a lot of content, Ton, tons of content. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do, so, yeah. do you have like a container blog post? I've, I've seen that on some posts where you have. Here's everything I wrote about stairs. Here's everything I wrote about X topics, for example. Yeah. So, so what I've been trying to do, and and what I've what I and you can see even on the top, see how it says um, presentation and documentation. P people are seeing your, oh, your yeah, screen, yeah, right? Sure. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I've been trying to do over the years, because there's so much content, is um, making it easier to find some of those things. Um, one of the things that Blockspot has been bad at in the past is search functions, um, and I and I acknowledge that, and I've been trying to make it easier for my for my uh, readers to get there. Um, and, and even uh, back when I started, I, I don't think I was using labels uh, in, in mm -hmm. some of these blog posts. I don't even know if I could. Maybe it didn't exist. Um, but I, what I've done is I've gone back and I've tried to curate the content um, based on those. So on the top there, um, you know, I've sort of grouped the content based on yeah. a couple of categories, which is oh, presentation, cool, yeah. documentation, creation, automation, and then the BIM After Dark Live. And so, you know, if, if you're interested in looking at just presentation blog posts over the last 12 years, if you click presentation, it'll filter all the all the posts um, by, mm -hmm. by presentation um and and so on and so forth so um and, and then the search the search function does work so it's there and and you know <laughs> i use it myself to find old posts oh, yeah. that i can't <laughs> find um so, over, over the years this has become a, a knowledge base for myself as well <laughs> did you um, ever yeah, yeah. so this happened to me a couple of times did you ever google something about credit only to find your own article and read it back oh, yeah. because you forgot about it all the time <laughs> <laughs> all the time especially after this many years um and then sometimes I'll find a post and realize that I've changed the way I do things and that'll make me want to update it. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that definitely, definitely happens all the time. The nice thing about being on Blogspot is it's already had, it, it already has all the Google 
um, you know, authority that it needed. So, so I'm sure, and I'm, I'm assuming and hoping that some of the readers out there have found me the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll admit when I started, uh, my blog, I was researching the, the best platform back in 2015. Hmm. I, I thought, I think it's probably a, a good idea to register uh, a .com domain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. after yeah seeing uh, all the bloggers using a uh, blogspot or other platforms yep. and uh, realizing mm-hmm. some of them close down or they just mm-hmm. get bought by other or development stops mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, if, yeah if something is free at first there's uh, always costs around it but i mean <laughs> when you get started then you create tutorials for other students you don't think about mm-hmm. that kind of stuff right Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And so, so, you know, I've always had the, the domains of the revitkid.com and they just, fo- you know, there's a homepage that'll get you there and all that good stuff. Um, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a neat, it's a nature of the beast. And, and so, uh, ideally over time I would have, I, I would convert it, but I, on, it, it's honestly, it's, it's an undertaking. It's, it's a new undertaking. <laughs> and, and looking at my list of questions. So, uh, what was it like to use Revit in college setting? Did you get good reactions from fellow students or from teachers? Because I know I can tell my, my experience back. I didn't really use Revit in college at all mm. because mm-hmm. the word on the street was that it, it was bad for creativity and it uh, it was all pre-made components. And then mm-hmm. you, you couldn't really do the design on, on your own because I've realized yeah. that's that isn't really true, at, at least if, mm. if you do it, you... It, you probably don't use it the right way, but that's something so, I've heard from college professors. Yeah. So, so yeah. Th- th- and that's, you know, my experience has is, is always been you know, it, it, similar in, in the sense of that. I think, you know, when, when I first started using it, um, you know, it, it was, it was exciting to, to students because they, they saw like, you know, the, oh, I can do plan sections, elevations all at the same time. I've got this library that I can use of walls and doors and windows. It makes it very easy to, to build out something in three dimensions. Right. Um, to this day, um, there's still uh, a, an issue, in my opinion, in, in universities, in higher education, uh, sort of um, the 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 uh, misunderstanding of Revit um, mm-hmm. from teachers as being um, a, a constraint on the design process. And so, um, honestly, my, my college career was actually because I felt that the entire time um, was kind of uh, spent trying to prove professors wrong in that sense. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I consider, as far as my my yeah. design style as an architect, you know, I, I'm I consider myself to be a more simple, you know, straightforward contemporary uh, mm-hmm. architect. Um, you know, I'm not building Zaha buildings and stuff like that, and I'm you know, you know not drawing many arcs and whatever. But mm-hmm. uh, in in school, uh, I, I I did a lot. I mean, I don't think there's a single straight wall anywhere. And mm-hmm. and par- part of that I think was because, um, you know, I was trying to show and prove to these professors like look, I did this in Revit. It does more than just boxes. Hello. Like it, it's, it's a design mm-hmm. tool mm-hmm. and it can be beneficial. And even now, um, you know, uh, I also, as you mentioned in my bio, I, uh, I teach, uh, you know, adjunct professor at, at university of Hartford, which is my alma mater. I've done that for almost six years now. And, and part of my coursework is, is teaching these, these students that, uh, you know, Revit doesn't have to be a restricting tool in your process. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's any tool, right? I mean, I mean, Maya can be restricting if you don't know what the hell you're doing in it, right? I mean, it, it's if, if, if SketchUp can be restricting if you don't know what you're doing. And it's it's all about the knowledge of the tool and, and how to use the, the functions of it, in my opinion. And are you teaching Revit to future architects? Yep. Yep. So that is um, that's oh, in, it's uh, it's in the architecture program um, mm-hmm. at, at my at the school that I, I graduated from, actually. So um and and it's um it's it's geared a couple different ways one of them is is uh one class is more uh, a parametric design class and i don't like to say parametric design it's more parametric modeling um and it's just teaching them the basics uh too advanced of uh, parametric modeling in revit um Mm -hmm. building families building parametric families of of all different shapes and sizes and the other one is more broad and it's more of um, exposing them to all the technologies that are out there including Revit and then how they all kind of tie together and, 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 uh, and, you know, the, the way my, my, uh, well, I, professor, my, my department chairs you know, at, at the time, uh, the way he, he sort of explained it to me was, I want you to teach a class that teaches our students everything about software and technology that you didn't learn when you were here. And so that, it was mm-hmm. kind of fun as I, mm-hmm. I got to sort of develop a class after graduating there that was like, well, this is what was missing at the university. So that's, that's what the other that's class cool. is. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if my, 
faculty would be open to something like that. <laughs> yeah, no, and 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 they've you know they've they uh, again I've, I've been asked back for I'm I'm not a you know full time professor I've been mm -hmm. asked back as an adjunct you know for for six years now so I'm assuming the students are giving me good good responses mm -hmm. and 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 wanting me to come back so. So I guess it's working out. <laughs> yeah, I've been also teaching at the local college, but it's more for a BIM coordinator slash BIM mm. manager course. So mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. little different approach, but teaching to future yeah. architect would be interesting for sure. Yeah, and I actually do teach in the in the in the what you know what you should know type of thing. I do have uh, two classes on Navis and coordination and all mm -hmm. that process because I think that you know all architects should know that as well if they're mm -hmm. going to be using Revit especially. <laughs> so and that's something you definitely don't learn in school. No, <laughs> having a glance at the comments, Beth Evenu says we can get we cannot get the local university to even let us teach the students. So uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of issues with that. Yeah, if there's uh, any students or people with uh, teaching experience, I would be curious to know in the comments what your experience mm -hmm. has been like. Are your professors and colleagues open to Revit or BIM other BIM software, mm -hmm. or is it still kind of the BIM is bad for your creativity <laughs> kind of stuff that I, I hear quite often. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. I, I think I think it's 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 a larger discussion too uh, beyond mm -hmm. sort of uh, who and what the staff are at the universities too. You know, if 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 the uh, if a lot of the the staff maybe aren't aren't working professionally as much, I think they're, they're even more likely to say you know steer away from Revit, uh, you know, it's, it's restricting. Whereas I think the staff that maybe um, are working still professionally are, are seeing, first of all, they're seeing that everyone's using BIM, uh, you know, in, in their in their workflow. So maybe it's valuable for students to know a tool that they're going to be asked to use when they get a job. Um, but the other aspect of it is, hopefully, they're, they're also seeing, um, you know, some of the projects that are being built using the, the tool, right? And, you know, the some of the most famous you know, recent, you know, architectural projects, uh, buildings are, 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 we're using BIM, right? I mean, that's, that's the truth of the matter. Yeah. Uh, all right. Looking at my questions again. Yeah. So how do you decide which, uh, topic to, to teach? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing in college you were, it were the questions that people were bringing to you. Mm -hmm. And perhaps later in your work, it was about issues you were facing and have you mm -hmm. converted into tutorials? Is that about your approach? Or sometime you just out of nowhere <laughs> like to research a topic you don't know <laughs> nothing about? I think it's a little bit of all of those. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, in the beginning, it was definitely what students were asking. And even, even you know, as, I, as, I've, as I've grown, um, it's also what, you know, maybe a problem that a colleague at the office had too and, and working through it with them uh, and finding a solution and then sharing it with the world. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, obviously my own uh, issues or, or trying to solve and then sharing with the world. And then there are some things, as you mentioned, that I like to dive deep into and then, you know, figure out and then share, you know, things like 3D printing directly from Revit. And, you know, more recently, I'm, I'm messing with some of these, uh, you know, bringing in point clouds from Google Earth and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. just, you know, these these fun little projects that luckily I, I am privileged enough to have time to mess with every once in a while. And then share them with with people and 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 a lot of that actually i think um you know uh helps me memorialize it in the blog which helps me go back to it as well but it also helps um um when you when you go through the process of developing a, a blog post or a, a video tutorial um i think it helps you uh uh not confirm but um um, sort of uh, uh, bake that that process in your mind and then figure out where maybe the flaws are or something like that but it also, I, I will say, I also it also the Revit community is small, and um, we have a lot of very very bright people in it, and uh, it also may may prove you wrong, and you find and people comment and give you other ways to do it, which is also great too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know for most of, I would say, especially my my best post, my best guide is something I'm frustrated about, and I cannot find the exact resource I'm looking for. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the posts and the first time I went on your show, it was about coordinates and I still mm -hmm. get uh, many hundreds of views on my website mm -hmm. uh, each day about the specific guide I wrote, which mm -hmm. was, and it was out of frustration. I was like, why can I not find answers about this? I mean, yep. I, I can find a little piece of information here and there. For example, mm -hmm. there was, yeah, Steve Stafford's Revit OP Ed uh, blog, mm -hmm. which contained a lot of information, but it was you know, 16 different blog posts. So I had to, yeah. to find a little bit here, a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, in my case, I, 
I like to create the, the content I wish was available before I started researching it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was just reading the comments. And so uh, Michael just said, does anyone remember Daryl uh, uh, CAD clips? I remember CAD clips, Daryl. Come on. Uh, that's, that's hilarious. That's funny. Actually, one, one of my, I, I reposted one of his roof tutorials like in 2010 and that thing still gets a ton of traction. <laughs> Revit Revit Rocks, I think, was the name of his blog. If it, if it reminds me, or if, if, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure if I remember that. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's Canadian, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, sorry about that. I. Yeah, I'm uh, glancing at the comments too. So that says the IAAS students were bigging them because they get passed over for jobs and they didn't mm. budge about teaching Revit in college. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's, it's one of the first things I say to, to my students is, um, you know, there's two ways you can, there's two ways you can sort of take my class in, in this, you know, the particular one where I basically teach them the basics of Revit and then, sh you know, show, touch on all the, all the other aspects of it to, to give them value. And, you know, there's, there's two ways they can approach it. It's, they can think of this right now as this tool and try and jump it into their design process and studio. But the other piece of it is when you graduate here, um, or if you're looking for a job right now, as you're going to school, um, odds are they're going to be asking if, if you have Revit experience, because, um, mm. I could tell you in, in, you know, in my region, um, I can't think of many, um, professional firms that are not using it. Uh, uh yeah, I, I, especially on the architecture side for sure. Yeah. I mean, perhaps on small residential firms. Mm. Yeah. I've been, I mean, since I've been working on my own, I've got a lot of demands, mostly from uh, small residential firms looking mm -hmm. to transition to Revit. I think they're their last old outs from the, the cat era. <laughs> See, it, it's, it's funny. Uh, cause I, I do think that there's, there's some truth to that. Um, but I, and I, I do also think that, um, um, there's, there's a lot of them that have, yeah, yeah but maybe you're right. Yeah. There's a holdout, but, uh, it's happening now where a lot of them are, are converting, um, which is cool. I, I love seeing that. Yeah. Oh, so glancing at the comments, I think I, think I just saw a question for me. Hey, what is that? Mark P just asked, you mind if I take a question? <laughs> yeah, I saw it there. yeah, go ahead. You're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't want, I don't want to take over the show. No, no, no. Go on. Go on. Uh, he, uh, Mark asked me, what other software do you use at work? Uh, do you use other BIM platforms? And, um, yes, <laughs> I use all kinds of stuff. Um, if you, uh, if you go back and check out all the 57 episodes of BIM after dark live, you will see, I, I share a bunch of them, but, uh, I just, just off the top of my head, um, you know, uh, Obviously, Revit is, is the main platform for model authoring and, and all that good stuff. Um, you know, we use a, a lot of twin motion um, for visuals here uh, for, for Turner because we're, we're doing a lot of sequencing and a lot of multi-phase stuff. Um, we use Assemble uh, Systems, which is an Autodesk software now for conditioning models, viewing models, takeoff, all that good stuff. Um, you know, uh, 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 what am I thinking? Oh, uh, BIM 360, all, all those platforms, you know, Glue and Navis and all that good stuff. Um, but as far as an authoring tool, um, that's, you know, we do all of our model authoring in, in Revit, no matter what. Have you ever tried R RCAD? A long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> um, way, way back, way back when, um, because the first firm I worked for was a smaller firm. There was only four, four of us. Um, and, and we did residential. And then we also did, we did a lot of digitizing for firms at the time. So, um, I think this is slowly becoming a lost art form, uh, because, uh, not as many architects are hand drafting. Uh, I mean, they're still out there, believe me, I've seen them. But um, at the time we had a lot of architects who, who were hand drafting and, and they were hiring the firm I worked for to actually convert them to CAD or Revit, which is kind of interesting. Um, but uh, uh, at that time, um, is that, that's uh, you know, 2007, 2008. Um, that's when I started learning Revit as well. And we, we kind of were learning both at the same time, ArchiCAD and Revit. Um, and part of the reason we, we made the the jump to Revit versus ArchiCAD at the time was we were also doing a lot of structural work um, mm -hmm. and and and, uh, and you know di cross disciplinary stuff and and you know ArchiCAD it just wasn't talking to the programs we needed it to and didn't you know didn't have that piece of it so and then I, I honestly never really looked back so uh, I apologize I know people always ask me like hey what do you think of ArchiCAD what do you think of VectorWorks mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they're great for what they do and i know people who, who live and die by them i just i just personally it's i never looked back once i jumped <laughs> yeah yeah sure i mean that's <laughs> learning a uh, software like that is a big time investment yeah. i haven't played yeah. with it uh, mm -hmm. uh at all uh, with in the last 10 years i think i've 
played with it a little bit in college, but that was a little while ago. Mm -hmm. I'm always fascinated with with um, with it and and with the the comp competition uh, for Revit. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, um, I've been closely watching um, the uh, uh, Blender BIM. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, so uh, B Blender is an open source modeling program. It's really cool. Um, uh, and there's someone developing a, a a program called Blender BIM, and it's kind of an add-in slash. Uh, I don't know if it's a plugin or an add. I'm not sure. Um, and you know, uh, it's it's the concept of it seems pretty cool. And, and you know, I'm I'm always willing to try it. And, and I tell people all the time, like you know, I, yes, I'm I'm the Revit kid, and I teach Revit, and I've sort of put all my eggs in a Revit basket. But um, I'm if if something came out that was better, that did what I needed, and I would not hesitate to try it. You know what I mean? That's that's, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, that's, that's not that's not in my in my makeup. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to uh, talk to you about what what makes a good Revit video or a good re Revit teaching blog post. So <laughs> how do you create good content that people people are gonna like and that they're yeah. gonna share and it's gonna be useful to them? <laughs> well, it's a it's a good question, um, and uh, I'm sure I'm sure folks out there would have their opinions too on this, but. I think the the one thing, and it's funny uh, when you when you asked me to come on it, and then you 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 uh, your show, and then you said let's talk about like mm -hmm. the sort of meta discussion about teaching Revit. Mm -hmm. I was I was excited, but then I was kind of thinking about it. I was like this is interesting because um, it's it's one of those things that uh, we've we don't really talk about out loud. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in, in other industries, they there's you know you know there's people preaching about this kind of stuff all the time, um, and we just for some reason we just don't talk about it. And so it's something we internalize a lot. Um, and I know that there's a lot of teachers out there. It's not just you and me and the Paul mm -hmm. Aubins and all those guys. Like, yeah, we're the ones who are, who are getting out there and doing it public. But I know even on the chat right now, there's plenty of people that are the Revit teacher within their firm or their consultants who are teaching people Revit or there's BIM managers. who are, and, and so, um, you know, everyone out there is, is probably anyone who knows Revit is probably teaching Revit. So um, the one thing that I've sort of learned over the years uh, is um, more of a learning philosophy, which is um, everyone you know, everyone learns differently. Uh, some mm -hmm. people, you know, some people are visual learners, some people are book type of learners. And so I've never, I've never tried to cater to every learning type. Um, I just catered to, to the learning type that made sense to me, um, which is what all my videos are based on. And that's very visual. Um, not a lot of text. I hate reading books. Uh, honestly, I really do. Um, and, and then also uh, informal, um, you know, side by side, teaching has always been my thing. So, you know, coming up to you at, at the office, sitting next to you and, and walking you through it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I structure all of my, all of my tutorials from day one. It's imagine I was sitting next to you and walking you through it. And, mm -hmm. and that works for a lot of people, but I know it doesn't work for everyone. I know people who would rather have, you know, the, the, you know, the, the book and flip through the steps and go back and forth. Um, so to me, yeah, the, 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 the more successful ones that I've seen for me um, have been the ones that, that are exactly what I just said, where it's, um, you know, uh, s not digging in too deep, um, you know, uh, 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 really conceptualizing the, the process, uh, as in keeping it big picture without digging in too deep. And then again, keeping it informal as if I'm sitting next to you teaching. Uh, I, I firmly believe that anyone who's learning Revit, um, is, is, is on the higher level of, of understanding and coherence with computers and, and software, right? I mean, if, if you're going to use Revit as a program, um, odds are you don't need help installing a printer, right? I, I would imagine, right? <laughs> that's just, you know, that's just the, the clientele and the, and the, the people that we are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, I mean, I know that's not 100% the case. I could tell you from experience, that's not always the case, but for the most part, I like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. So I don't feel it's necessary to, um, to, 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 to bog down a tutorial with unnecessary nuance. I feel like I, I'm giving you, the, 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 the viewer or the, the, the student, um, the benefit of the doubt that you can, you can, if I give you point A to point B and there may be two little steps in between, you can figure those out. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's how I've always approached it and it, it seems to work. I think people enjoy it. Um, I think it, it's, it, it's, it's what makes my teaching method a little different than others uh, is, uh, getting you know maybe instead of a 12 minute tutorial it only needs to be six uh, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah i'm trying to do the i guess we have a similar approach perhaps i think i've, I've read somewhere i'm gonna paraphrase here but you know, 
talking about uh, teaching material like this, that simplicity is better than precision, which mm -hmm. might, might sound a little crazy. You say, oh my God, you need to be precise. But yeah, it, I think you need to be precise for, you know, 95% of the people are going to read it mm -hmm. and it's going to be absolutely fine for them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a few users for them. There's a few specific steps that, or they're doing mm -hmm. something really specific and it's not working for them, but that, that's okay. But maybe you're not making yeah. the videos for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, like, for example, one, one thing that, you know, I, I always see, you know, if I make a tutorial and maybe I, I call a tool or a, a button the wrong name or something like that. And there are some people that will hook on that, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't, it, I, you're seeing where the mouse goes, I'm explaining it. And that's, that is what it, and, and so I, I always, I always try not to get bogged down in those nuances of it. Um, and it's more along the lines of, um, you know, in these five minutes, did you understand the concept that I'm teaching? And, and that's, that's the goal to me, for me is, is figuring out. And that's, that's how I do uh, teach my students too at, at the university of Hartford. And the same way I approach all my tutorials, it's, it's, um, you know, uh, uh, giving you the benefit of the doubt. Um, and then, you know, if, 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 like you said, if 95% of the people get it and there's 5% that need those details, those 5% are usually mm -hmm. not shy to ask you. So let them ask, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's sort of how, how I approach it. Not to mention, you know, there are books out there with, you know, 700 pages that have mm -hmm. every, if that's your, if you're that type of person, then maybe that'll help you fill in the details. So, but that's just my approach. And it seems like, uh, in my, you know, 12 years of experience doing this, um, it seems to be an approach that is, you know, successful for most people. Uh, yeah. When, when I was creating my beginner course, my, my philosophy was instead of saying, okay, what information should I have to, to make this better? I was starting from scratch and what is the bare minimum people need to know so they can complete a project. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's not going to be information for all kinds of projects for all advanced modeling. But mm -hmm. for most people, I think it's better because you don't get confused and messed up in all the small details that, mm -hmm. you know, that you would get I, in a help file, for example. You know? Yeah. And I also, um, you know, the approach to learning Revit, it, it's, it's, it can be linear, right? It, mm -hmm. it, can, it can be if you want it to be step one, step two, step three. But using Revit and, and even learning it, in my opinion, is, is, all, is, is a little less linear. It's, it's, it's you know because there's so much there, right? If you just went from part, you know, from beginning to end, um, you'd probably forget most of the beginning, <laughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. and so, so my, my, my theory and my, my thought is, you know, even though those folks that are learning it, um, odds are they're only going to learn what they need to at that just in time, you know, for that moment in time. And then you sort of backfill and backfill and backfill. I mean, that's how I learned the program, right? It's, I, I, I was learning what I needed at that time. And then, you know, and then you, you sort of, over the years, you sort of gain all this different knowledge for different aspects of it. You know I mean? Just recently, and I'll, I'll I'm never afraid to admit anything. <laughs> uh, anyone who's followed me over the years knows that I have no shame when it comes to this stuff. Um, you know, I, I barely touched the rebar tool in Revit ever. And, you know, just, just like a month or two ago, I had to do something at the office and, and I had to learn, I had to learn the rebar tool, you know, and, and, and it was cool. It, it was, you know, and that's, you know, uh, that's me using Revit for 12 plus years. It's just something I never, I never learned. I never had to do, but now it's part of my repertoire. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I dug through some content. I, I, I messed around on my own, which is usually what I'll do first. It just, you know, break stuff and try it. Um, and then, you know, there was, there was helpful tools and stuff online that I found that helped me, you know, just get over the hump. Yeah. And yeah, what did you mention earlier about what you teach? Like if you would be sitting next to, to a person mm -hmm. at the office, I mean, I did a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. When creating content, I, I I'm try sure everyone out there. I bet everyone yeah. out there can relate to that. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's what, you know, the second, even if you're not the BIM manager or anything, or if it is mm -hmm. it's, most likely it's not part of your role at the firm you're working for right now, mm -hmm. the fact that you even remotely understand Revit means that you're that person who's doing it. Right. And so, so you're yeah. the person that's side by side right now showing someone how to, uh, you know, filter a door schedule or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're sitting next to someone like that and you have, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to quickly show them something, are you going to go through all the list, complete list of everything you can do? No, you're going to straight to the point. Yeah. Here's exactly. like the five things, super important things you really need to know to do that mm -hmm. step. You're not right. going to go into every single detail. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's an interesting way. So glancing at the chat to see what's going on, a lot of comment. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick from Sweden says, in Sweden, architects and structure are using Revit quite widely, but MEP are struggling a bit still using 3D CAD, largely due mm -hmm. to a lack of competence in mm -hmm. localized content, I think. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's similar here. I think the in Quebec, the mechanical engineers have been slow to start using BIM, mm. and often mm. I, I've had projects where the structure and architecture are both using 
uh, Revit or BIM, but mechanical engineers still sending us mm. uh, 2D uh, DWG files. <laughs> and obviously on, on the field, there's no coordination issues at all be between uh, structure and architecture. Of course not. <laughs> and, but all all the vents are at the wrong height and <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I could tell you in my region, so this is Northeast United States, um, we do have um, most of the MEP engineers uh, as well as the structural engineers in the architects are using Revit. Um, the the contractors, uh, not as much, um, you know, the, the structural contractors are usually using some version of, of Tecla or STS or some steel program that most likely works with their fabrication tools. And the MEP uh, subcontractors the same way. Um, they're usually using AutoCAD MEP um, and for their coordination models and then for fabrication, hopefully too. But I will tell you that um, uh, the MEP engineers are are using it, which is great. Um, are they using it to the full extent that they could be? Probably not. <laughs> um, and so there are still a lot of coordination that has to happen. But um, we are seeing. Um, actually, I can't. I can't uh, remember a job where the architect was using Revit, where the MEP, where the consultants were not. Uh, mm -hmm. we, you know, it, it's been a long time for that. Uh, as far as the main consultants, the MEP and the structure. Um, you know, if the architect is, is using 2D CAD, which again, I haven't seen that in a while either in, in, in my professional world uh, with larger jobs, um, then, you know, the rest of the team maybe. But even on those, it's funny. Uh, some of those jobs where the architect is using CAD, uh, the engineers are the ones using Revit. And because, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're not going to back down to 2D because the architect yeah, sure. who hired them is using it type of thing, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so crazy that in 2021 we're still having these discussions <laughs> i mean we're having the same discussions yeah. 10 years ago like cad versus bim mm -hmm. i mean I, I, it's starting to uh, most people are have transition at this point but it's the fact that we still have to talk about it and talk how bim is better it's a little yeah. crazy but it's yeah broken, I, at, at the same time <laughs> i can understand for some people if you've been using a successful workflows for years and suddenly people tell you, well, that doesn't work anymore. Throw that mm -hmm. all in the garbage and you, you've got to use this process. Mm -hmm. I, I can see how that can be off-putting for people, but you still mm -hmm. have to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um, um, Somebody had a, a good question I just saw. Hold on. Uh, uh, where'd it go? I just lost. It just rolled on me. Um, oh, somebody asked about um, best exercises for understanding Revit for beginners. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an interesting question. Um, and and I, I'd love to hear what you, you think about this too. But um, to me, the way the way um, it kind of goes along with my philosophy with the tutorials and learning um, is the best exercise is to, and this is actually what I have my students do um, in, in that class. You know, when, when we first started the class, um, I was under the impression that they already took some sort of a Revit basics class because there's this you know, this sort of uh, construction documents class, which supposedly they're learning Revit to use or you know, learning Revit to do. Um, turns out it wasn't really the case. And so I kind of now started assuming that the students know nothing about Revit. Um, some do, some don't. And um, what I actually have them do, and this seems to be extremely successful um, as far as getting them started is um, we have uh, a house, just a house model, uh, not even model, it's, it's a a set of um, floor plans, elevation section that I have from um, uh, for a house. And um, during the session, um, we actually just rebuild this thing. So it's just 2D floor plans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, images basically. And we're, we build this thing from scratch. Um, mm -hmm. And then at the same time, their homework is they have to pick a house on their, of their own that mm -hmm. has just 2D documents and build that from scratch. And so we're building two houses from scratch. Um, and uh, it seems to be really successful because what it's doing is um, you know, you're building something, which is cool. Um, it, it, it helps you learn the whole extracting two dimension to three dimension. And then I think it helps conceptualize, oh, wait a minute, uh, you know, Revit's doing that whole 3D, 2D thing for me. Um, but then it also makes you use the basic tools, which I hate teaching the basic tools personally. I'm, I'm just, I just hate teaching one-on-one stuff. I, and, and maybe it's just because I've been using it for so long or, or mm -hmm. um, and so I'd rather teach it in this sense, which is, um, you know, doing something any angle which is building you know, building building this house so the walls you know walls doors windows roofs floors uh you know that kind of stuff we build as we're building this this model together and so um i in my opinion that seems to be uh the most successful way to get people started again not getting hung up on all of the details of all of that um you know just doing what we need to get that task done and then we can always backfill the details or as they develop they'll, they'll backfill the details themselves 
Yeah, I, I mean, it, it depends of, on, on the people. I know in my case, you know, I've had uh, back in 2011 when I was I just got out of college, got hired at this fully BIM firm. Mm -hmm. And I've had a, a week training, uh, Revit training, and then I was immediately put on this super complicated patrimonial project mm -hmm. with huge stone walls, doing renovation works for uh, mm -hmm. luxury uh, condos. It, it was the, the model was insane. It was really complicated to use. But and I've had mm -hmm. a, what we these days we call a, a BIM champion next to me. So mm -hmm. every five minutes I was like, hey, how do you do that? And <laughs> after a year, I was pretty good at Rivet. That's how I, yeah. I learned. So, but it depends on the personality, personality of people. Some people would get mm. scared, like uh, learning it the hard way like this. Yeah. But for some people, it, it can work, if, especially if you're lucky enough to have a BIM champion next to you. <laughs> and or or, or other, resources, yeah. resources <laughs> that can help you, right? And mm -hmm. that's, I think that's where you know, folks like yourself and, and myself mm -hmm. and, and the great, you know, the great Revit users on Twitter that that we all know uh, come into play. I mean, it's it's you know, by finding by finding uh, other like you said, if you don't have that Revit champion, I can guarantee you you can go on a forum or go on Twitter and find a Revit champion yes, that will be absolutely. more than willing to answer your question. So yeah, um, it's we're, we're fortunate as far as that's concerned. But you made a good point, which is um, jumping into the deep end and breaking stuff is the only way to learn mm -hmm. Revit, in my opinion. Like you cannot be afraid to click a button, just do it. And, and, you know, and you'll, you'll never do it again if it breaks something. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a great way to learn, but it's also uh, a, a great way to remember what not to do too. So, <laughs> yes, I would say the counterpoint to that is uh, from experience. If you put, uh, like a super experienced cat user and you put them on a super complicated Revit project they're probably mm. going to hate it. <laughs> it depends <laughs> yes. on the people. Some people are going to yeah, love it, yeah. but uh, right, I've right. seen some uh, cat experts like go nuts about. Well, that, I mean, that's a good point <laughs> there is, is, um, you know, converting a cat user to Revit is, 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 is in my opinion, more challenging yes. than teaching someone who doesn't know cat. Yes. Uh, because they're looking honestly, for specific tools where are the layers they're looking for a very where, specific yeah. way of doing things mm -hmm. that, that is different as opposed to someone like a student, for example, that I'm teaching at, at, uh, the university who uh, probably hasn't spent 10 years on CAD making documents. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, they've, they maybe have messed around with certain programs just to get whatever they needed done for studio. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. It's a, uh, it's easier to teach people who didn't really use CAD. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, in my case, I've used CAD a lot in, in college, but almost not at all uh, in the workplace. I got straight mm -hmm. to Revit. So. I didn't Good. get attached to kind of silly <laughs> cat workflows. I mean, and, and and no offense to any of the cat users out there. I I used it as well for, um, let's think, uh, two thousand four. So yeah, almost four, four or five years. I used CAD strictly for construction documents at the firm I worked for. So, I, I know all the keyboard shortcuts, and I, I've I've gone down that path. But it, it just made me more appreciative of Revit when I started learning. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> all right, let's have a look at the question now. Where are we now? Oh yeah, that's a good one. What is your most ever popular tutorial? So you have twelve hundred posts. Do you have like what is the number one? <laughs> well, uh, um, uh, let's see. So, so depending on how you look at popularity, um, there's different mm -hmm. there's different ways. Um, so, um, for example, uh, if we look at just sort of YouTube views uh, of a tutorial, um, you know the the top three. Um, and some of this isn't necessarily fair because. Um, um, you know, some of them have been around for a very long time. Like number three has been, was, I posted in 2009. It's actually in the old UI, um, but that's just overviews. And so the first one is learning Dynamo for Revit in 10 minutes. The second one is um, uh, exploded axon techniques. Mm -hmm. So making exploded axons in Revit. Um, and then the third one is topography basics in mm -hmm. 2009, <laughs> which is a, which is a good one. And so, and there's a couple of rendering ones. So those are just uh, YouTube views. But then on the blog posts, which um, have been around, been around obviously for a long time too. Um, oh, I just clicked off of it. Hold on, let's go see here. It's a little different, um, which is, there's actually one <laughs> that, there's a, there's, a, there's a post that I posted a, a long time ago um, about Revit pattern files, and some of you may have mm. found that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a .pat source file that um, my colleague and I at the time made, um, and um, uh, it's, it's a free download of it. And so that one um, has been a, a lot of use. And then the other one is um, 3D printing in Revit, 
Wait, is this uh, this file a Revit tutorial? This one, this one has a ton. This, this one, this one has a ton. Um, Back so from how 2011. How you... Uh, yes. you know what? I think I, I probably used this file at some point <laughs> before. And that was one of those things as well, where like I, I, you know, at the time I had to make a 24 inch by 144 inch metal panel that was a staggered mm -hmm. bond, and um, there was no hatch hatch 2d or whatever it's called at the time um there was no pi revit right none of these things existed mm -hmm. um and so uh what you had to do was modify the the dot pat file and so this was an explanation of it which is kind of funny um and then there's one where it's actually downloading a a, a pat file mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of custom pattern files and then the other yeah, the on the blog one of the most popular ones is actually 3d printing in revit mm -hmm. um which is uh, a post that um i made i don't know what year that is let's see 2017 2017. So I made that one in 2017. And this is a process that I developed for at Turner. Uh, and it was because we were getting a ton of models from from architects. Um, and we were we had a 3d printer that we were we were creating um, logistics plans that we wanted to make kind of like game pieces. And so, um, you know, rebuilding or, or trying to how can we, you know, press 3d print uh, as directly as possible from Revit. And so this was the the process because I learned real quickly that you can't just print a Revit model as is; it doesn't work. <laughs> and so this is the process of of sort of creating that and making these these models that that we that we still use today, which is kind of cool. Cool. Well, these are the winners among twelve uh, hundreds. <laughs> yeah, among the twelve. I mean, there's you know there's a few that are that aren't really blog posts that are or mm -hmm. aren't really tutorials. Um, like there was a, uh, an activation issue that used to happen back in like 2000, God, 2012, 2011, mm -hmm. um, that I had sort of a, a journal file fix for, and that one always is very popular. And then there's a family creation tutorial series, um, back from 2010 that, um, has a ton of views. Um, the unfortunate piece is that that's on Revit, that's pre ribbon Revit. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I mean, I'm assuming people are still finding it and mm -hmm. I'm hoping that maybe they go see some of the newer family creation tutorials that are out there. <laughs> All right. So next question. Um, why did you evolve your site to BIM after dark? And when did you realize your content had business potential? Oh, so, um, there's a couple of things happening, uh, when, when the BIM after dark name and, and brand and, and sort of, um, everything came to a float. And one of them was, um, and I don't know if there's any Autodesk folks on the chat. I'm sure they will be watching this in the future. So, um, I mean, I'm, they weren't there at the time, I'm sure, but, um, this was around the time that Autodesk was cracking down a little on blogs. And, uh, some of you guys may remember that, um, there was some, some, I don't know, issues, but, um, they were just, uh, sort of, um, um, cracking down on people using Revit in the domain names of blogs, uh, mm -hmm. at the time. And, um, and so part of, part of the, my, uh, thinking was, um, rebranding and renaming to keep, take Revit out of the name of the domain was one of it. But the other piece of it was, um, um, you know, trying to, uh, uh, separate the, the full, full length course content from the free, uh, tutorial six minute content. Um, and then also, you know, uh, uh, giving the freedom, as I mentioned, like, I don't know in 10 years, if Revit's going to be what we use. I mean, so far, 12 years later, it still is. Right. But I don't know. I don't know what BIM will be in 10 years. And so, um, you know, I, I have a feeling BIM will still be the term maybe. Um, but, uh, but maybe Revit won't be the tool. And mm -hmm. so the other piece of it was, um, you know, uh, uh, this thing could evolve into other programs beyond Revit. And so, um, and the BIM after dark made sense to me because everything I did on this blog for the past 12 years, in <laughs> including this today, um, usually happens sort of after hours. It's always been a side mm -hmm. hustle. And so mm -hmm. it's always been dark outside, although it's not today, but, um, <laughs> and so, so it kind of made sense. Like, what, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm BIMing after dark, right? It's, it's <laughs> and so that, that's, that's where the name came from. Uh, as far as, um, you know, uh, the value slash, um, you know, creating full length type of courses, um, it, it, it really came from, um, you know, people were asking for it a little bit too, um, as far as, um, do, you know, I was getting a lot of emails asking about, I, you know, there's at the time, maybe there was a thousand, maybe there was 900 posts. I don't know how many posts there were, but, um, you know, they were asking, you know, do you have a, a follow-up to this one? Do you have a, a, a prequel to this one? Like, where is it? And there's just, there was so much content that was sporadic, um, that I thought it made sense to sort of compile it into, um, a full length course. Uh, the other piece of it was, um, you know, I've always been a huge fan of, of 
of graphics and presentation graphics and and really uh, 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 dismantling that idea that Revit's ugly, um, mm -hmm. which is we, we've been talking about even before with, mm -hmm. with teachers, right? Um, and so I really wanted to make a, a, a course that sort of showed, hey, Revit can be sexy. This is what it can look like. And, and that, that really sprung uh, what you know as today is BIM After Dark. Great, yeah. Well, congratulations for your great care for the aesthetics of uh, your content. <laughs> It's something I also care about a lot and I pay attention to. You, you get a little more flexibility being on WordPress too. <laughs> yeah, uh, as I'm, far uh, as the blog uh, is concerned. Yeah, I'm using Squarespace actually. Oh well, Square, Squarespace is even better. I like Squarespace mm -hmm. better than WordPress myself. But it's, it's I, awesome I think it it might be you know a lot of uh, BIM blogs out there are not always made by people who are architects or, or mm -hmm. perhaps it can be the case, but a lot of people mm -hmm. who are perhaps more technical minded. So I think the mm -hmm. architect mindset when you're in the mm -hmm. studio, you're you're kind of stuck forever with that. The mm -hmm. way that you come all you became almost uh, OCD about creating aesthetically pleasing stuff. Yep. And things yep. that are coherent on a whole. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. that, it's definitely affected. Architecture school definitely affected the way I create the uh, teaching mm -hmm. material. And I definitely see that in your content too. Sweet, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have a look at the question. I'll have a look at, at mine. Dude, yeah, it, it's almost here. three. Do you have time for uh, a couple more? Then I'll yeah, we can go. take a couple more. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. So a couple more, all right. Out. <clears throat> all right, let's see. Well, I think we should... Uh, okay, two more. I have more here. But... Uh, why did you decide to switch from an architecture uh, firm to a construction company? Mm. And how has that worked out for you? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, so I think you did mention it. So anyone mm -hmm. who doesn't know, right, that's I, I do. I'm the regional BDC manager for Turner Construction right now for New England. Uh, that's my role. Um, I've been there now for uh, almost over six years. Um, it was kind of a, similar to uh, even the blog. Uh, it was kind of a timing thing. Um, uh, uh, I was, um, the, the firm that I was working for, I, I just got my license. So, um, I, I was fortunate enough to work during school. Um, and when I graduated, um, I graduated in, um, you know, May and then, um, by August of that year, I started taking my exams. So I already had the hours I needed essentially, um, during school, which was nice. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it was cause I was working at this firm that I, I, at the time I was there for almost five years. And I loved it. I loved the place. I loved the people. Um, unfortunately, the place and the people kind of uh, uh, changed uh, dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost a lot of the people or they were let go. And um, and the firm itself sort of started dwindling a little. And so um, I was essentially uh, job searching. And and my initial um, goal was, uh, and I'm, again, not ashamed to admit this, it was uh, I said, if I'm going to go somewhere else, I want to be an architect. I want to, I don't want to be the Revit guy. I want to mm -hmm. be um, a designer like that. Mm -hmm. That's I, when it comes to architecture, that's, that's the piece that I really love is I love designing. Um, and, uh, so I kind of went out there and, and I interviewed at a bunch of firms, submitted portfolios and, and all that's good stuff. Um, and every one of the interviews was like, yeah, this is great. Um, your stuff looks awesome, but we really need a BIM manager. <laughs> this is like, cause at the time too, this was 2000, what, 10 or five, 15, I don't know, uh, 14. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, at the time that was when there was a huge influx of, of firms converting to, to Revit mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they were all looking for someone to help them do that. And, and I, I, I was sticking to my guns and I said, I, I'm not going to make this jump, um, to be the Revit guy again. You know, I, I want to, you know, if I'm going to do it, I want to be a designer and, and design buildings and, and so on. Um, it just happened to know Revit. Right. And so, um, as I went through four or five of those interviews, um, the, the project that I was working on at the time, uh, I was, it was one of my favorite projects um, to this day, where I was able to do uh, from conceptual design all the way through to construction administration, um, essentially kind of be the lead architect with designers. I mean, just everything. Part of it was because half the people uh, late, quit or late got laid off, but <laughs> I, I, I was able to do a lot of work on this school. And um, Turner Construction was the CM on that school. And so I got to know some of the guys there. And um, um, one of them, you know, having drinks after a meeting or something like that, you know, mentioned that they were looking for their VDC or their BIM manager was called at the time. BDC wasn't really a term, um, was, was leaving. They were moving across the country. And so they're kind of, you know, they're looking for someone and he, he was, he was sly. He was, he was sort of asking me, uh, uh saying like, do I know anyone? But I think secretly <laughs> yeah. he was signing uh -huh. kind of like, you know, yeah. hinting. 
And so I basically said, well, you know what? I've got my license now. Um, you know, I, that, that was the first goal was getting my license. And I needed an architecture firm to do that, right? I needed the experience and the hours to do that. Um, so I said, uh, if, if, if I'm being st stuck in this corner of being the BIM person, why not do it here? Um, and then, you know, selfishly learn and s learn that whole side of the industry, um, as well as sort of meeting and understanding how all the competition firms, the ones I interviewed at, you know, I've worked mm -hmm. with all of them now to this mm -hmm. day. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I can see their Revit standards and see how they were doing things. And so you know, sort of selfishly, it was a way for me to also sort of learn about all that other stuff. And so I just did it. I said, Let, let's do it. I'll, I'll figure it out. I had no idea what I even was going to be doing there at the time, really. Um, and so now, you know, six years later, it's, it's, it's actually been a ton of fun. I've, I've learned an incredible amount. Um, you know, you don't get to see everything when you're the architect working with the CM, there's always a filter, there's always a wall. Um, and, and in my opinion, uh, understanding how the people who build what you design, build it, um, makes you a way, way better architect. And so for that, for that, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that, <laughs> that now I, I, I understand both sides of it. And I think personally, that makes me a better architect. Sure. And did you ever think of doing uh, beam after dark full time? I have mm -hmm. numerous times. Um, <laughs> and, uh, the unfortunate piece, um, uh, is, 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 um, you know, the, there's, there's a few factors there, but, uh, and you living in Canada, uh, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily have to worry about, uh, you know, health insurance and all yeah. that side of mm -hmm. it. Um, so that's one thing that always comes into mind. And then also, mm -hmm. you know, have, having my two children and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, giving you know, my, my wife the freedom to, to take care of them. Um, and then, you know, so, so yes, uh, I have numerous times. Um, and as much as I feel I am a, an entrepreneur and risk taker to some extent, there are certain things that I'm just not comfortable, uh, you know, risking yet. And that's, that's one of it. Uh, the, the good, the other thing is I've been hustling for 12 years doing both <laughs> uh, that, um, it's, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll be bored if I don't, I, I don't know <laughs> if I'm not, if I'm not doing both, but yes, I have, I have numerous times. Um, but, and one of the biggest things honestly is, is the, the lack of, of, of a safety net socially here in, which is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll admit it's, uh, it's helpful to have, uh, that here in Canada, universal healthcare yeah. for sure helps the, the decision. Yeah, because I've been on, on my own since March. But you know, I've been doing Rivet Pure on the on the side too for for a while, and I really want wanted to keep being an architect, perhaps like you, and keep doing design work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would still see Rivet uh, as a tool and not an end. Mm -hmm. if you know what I'm saying? And yeah, and also to keep being faced with a real life situation that, that, that yes. I, I use in my tutorials. Mm -hmm. So that was yep. a big piece of it. But I will say I with uh, with two kids, it's getting more and more challenging to do <laughs> both at once. You, you we'll, we'll see how it goes for you. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it goes for me too. You're right, you're right. Mm -hmm. the, 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 um, you know, uh, the, you're right in the sense that, um, you know, having, having real worlds, um, tasks and projects, mm -hmm. uh, is, is a, is a, a mechanism for teaching too. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, those are the problems that come up and make tutorials and, and all the content that you see. So it's a great point that even if I said, yeah, I'm doing this full time, um, you know, I would still try my best to get, you know, architecture clients to, so that I can continue, you know, doing architecture and using Revit as a tool for, uh, you know, as opposed to just the, 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 the only thing I'm doing is teaching architecture, right? And I think yes. it makes me a better teacher yeah. to begin with, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, even in college, uh, those the, the professors who still have a, a, a practice. Well, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say they are always better, but they often have uh, point of views that are more uh, more depth to them than those mm -hmm. who only teach full time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I can't disagree with that. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go for a last question. Sure. Uh, yeah, let's talk uh, about the future. What, what first would you have any big plans for BIM After Dark? And then I think it would be interesting to hear your thoughts about where BIM and AEC are going. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, so um, uh, definitely, um, I've 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 enjoyed the live shows, and and I think they've um, they've they've ex exposed me to, to different people, which is nice, but I, I, you know, I've gotten to meet a lot of the people in the chat and then follow up on Twitter and other, and hopefully one day, one day in, in the future in person. Um, 
and I, I, I plan on, uh, you know, starting those again, like I said, and coming back with a bang. Um, I think there's a value in, in this format. Um, and I also kind of thrive on it. I've always enjoyed presenting too. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that I like to do. And so being able to sort of present like I'm at a conference or something every week is kind of fun too for me. <laughs> um, so I, I plan on continuing that. And then as far as the, uh, you know, after dark, um, you mentioned a little bit, uh, you know, the community is kind of, um, I feel the next, uh, uh, continuing to grow the, the BIM After Dark community, um, which is the private platform where all of my um, curated content yep. and only courses let, are. Let me show that uh, on the screen. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> go for it, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, community, or if you go to just BIMAfterDark.com. Yep, just community.bimafterdark.com okay. will get you there. I'm uh -huh. still, uh, if you go to BIMAfterDark.com, it's still uh, you know, the, the homepage to the blog, which mm -hmm. I'm still in the process of updating. And, and you've created a special link, right? I think we can share that. I right have, now. yep, yeah. yep, yep. So uh, for, for anyone watching this today, if you go to um, pure.bimafterdark.com, it'll get you to a little page where um, I, I've uh, put a bunch of links for you guys um, uh, to different content, including a bunch of my free eBooks um, and, and cheat sheets, uh, cheat sheets on dynamo. There's a free twin motion course. There's all kinds of cool stuff there. Um, and then also a 14 day free trial into the BIM after dark community. And so I, I think the reason I, not just to bring up the community for the sake of it, I, I think it actually goes along the lines of the, uh, teaching and the, and the pedagogy that we've been talking about this whole episode, which is, um, you know, I, the first course I ever produced was the BIM after sexy course, mm -hmm. um, which was called volume one at the time. And that was in 2013. So, um, you know, the first course I ever created full length course was quite a while ago too. And, um, over the years now I've, I've created four full length courses with multiple updates to them. Um, one of the things that I felt was missing, um, with the, the learning content, uh, as far as just downloading a Revit course and then viewing it, um, was the follow-up it mm -hmm. was the 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 interaction with the teacher it was the um okay what now it was you know if we're updating things how do you do it mm -hmm. and so when um you know, i joined a membership community for uh, other things uh, something else mm -hmm. actually for, for jazz guitar actually mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh and i start to i started to realize the benefits of of having this private space where um not only is the course content there so at any moment in time someone who's taking my course can can make a comment and i see it or they can just chat mm -hmm. me and i can see it in this closed platform but also being able to post questions for the community to respond to as well mm -hmm. and like for uh, and i we we have 146 members now which is fantastic and they're all amazing um and over the last you know two three weeks um i've kind of obviously stepped away for a minute uh you know and they all knew this was happening because you know i had it i had mm -hmm. another child and um even when I stepped away, you know, I'm, I'm you know, in, in my mind, I'm like, oh, you know, uh, no one's going to be there to, to answer questions and help them out. But there were all the other members were helping each other. And, and, and to me like that, that's huge when it comes to this Revit learning thing mm -hmm. um, is, and if, if, if you know, on the sales page for community, uh, for the community, it says, you know, learning Revit together. Actually, it says it down here, learning Revit together, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, and it, from my experience, and I think most people out there probably feel it, um, for the longest time, uh, you feel very isolated and alone when you're learning Revit, right? <laughs> you may be the only person at the firm. Um, you may be the only person, you know, at your school, you may, whatever. And so to me, um, having a place to, to connect with other people who are either learning exactly at the same level you are, or to your, to what we talked about before, being able to have that, that, um, that guru to ask and, and, and when you're stuck on a single problem, uh, creating a virtual place for that to me was, was, was the end goal. And I think I've created it and, and I'm, I'm creating more content for it. Um, we, we have office hours, you know, every two weeks where it's a zoom meeting like this with whoever wants to join from the membership. And, um, it's, it's, it's pulling together all those philosophies that we've been talking about this whole, this whole episode, um, into a place and, and I'm super excited about it. So, um, the future is to keep focusing on that, um, you know, focus on, on BIM after dark live. And then, uh, see where we go from there <laughs> uh, all right I interesting so p make sure to check out b uh, pure.bmafterdark.com i've put the link in the chat else later awesome. on i'll put it in the video description awesome yeah uh yeah i mean i totally understand that my course are still uh downloads but um mm -hmm. i'm actively looking for 
uh, platforms for uh, yes online. The, the other the other thing which I think now exists more on on online platforms that's helpful for mm -hmm. you is you know mine were always uh, and anyone who's taken them thank you guys if you take them in the past especially the older courses um, knows that it used to be just a zip file with all the videos and file, sample mm -hmm. files and all that stuff. And um, when it came to like, oh, I need to change a chapter, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was it was extremely challenging to get that out to all the people. And, yeah. You know, well, you have to resend the whole thing, stuff. right? You, mm -hmm. Or yeah, or or you had to resend the single, but you had to make sure it got to them via whatever email. It, it was just mm -hmm. it just it, it was crazy, right? And and you know who downloaded what version, etc. And so um, at any moment in time, like for example, I did that uh, a, a twin motion course. Uh, as I learned twin motion, I wanted to teach it to everyone else. And so I just added a, a chapter to my BIM can be sexy class, and it was twin motion. I just added it in the membership. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so anyone who, who's a member sees it. And if you become a member now, you see. So I can just you know manipulate content on the fly and let people know, which is which is pretty awesome. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was uh, were many people in the chat talking about beginner courses. So I, I feel obliged to self promote and I quickly mentioned my, it, man. my own uh, basics course. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty happy with the with this specific course. I've just uh, remade the landing page. Uh, so if you want to to learn the basics of Revit, I apply a minimalism a philosophy to teach Revit. So everything we've talked about, the best practices for uh learning I, th I think they're present on this course so have a look ripyourcom slash basics so anyway don't want to awesome. take too much time about it and yeah i think we, it's your show not mine yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh yeah i'm curious to hear your thoughts about the, the future of where bim is going and how it's going to grow do you think do you think rivet is still going to be used widely in 10 years is something else going to replace it hmm so I don't know. I don't, I don't know about Revit as the tool. Um, what I do know and what I think is, is sort of the, the future of where we're heading. And I'm actually starting to see this now uh, on a couple of the jobs with Turner that we're working with um, more, uh, I don't want to say progressive, but I guess progressive educated uh, clients. Um, you know, they're asking more and more about um, a model-based deliverable um, for, for building projects. And so to me, that, that, that's sort of the that that's always been kind of the holy grail of 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 bim in general is is um in, in my opinion that's been my holy grail is to is to get rid of construction documents the 2d mm, version yeah. of them and in mm. a model-based delivery so i still think we have a long way to go yes, yeah. um, we're starting to see a lot of a lot of progress towards it um um and i i think it, just like everything else it's going to lag behind but i i think that that's what we're going to see um um in the next maybe five to ten years is more and more of a push to it as as you know as more uh as more aspects of the design and construction um, um process uh, are using models as we mentioned before right the, the if the designers are all using it but then some of the subs aren't you know the more subs that are building in 3d the more subcontractors mm -hmm. that are building 3d more manufacturers but the more model stuff we have um i think the more the more we're going to start hearing like i said with owners that are asking us we actually i mean literally there's an owner asking us right now that like how can we how can we help you help the design team help everyone to 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 use a model as the the bidding document you know like what what does that take and so to me that 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 is going to be the the strive that's that's my end goal i, I hope before i die uh we don't <laughs> i hope a building is built before i die that or multiple buildings i should say um that um don't have a sheet in a title block <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, they're model-based deliverable um and so um and i hope that becomes sort of the the uh the thing moving forward and that's that's you know that's a lot of what my focus is at, at turner is is a model-based digital uh, approach to building and, and so i'm hoping that that's the case across the board and and i'm hoping we see more of that so yeah. whether revit's the tool again i don't know i mean mm -hmm. I, and and i'm i'm open to try anything um if it means we get to that end goal <laughs> yeah i mean there are so many challenges to get to, to that point so i would be curious perhaps you are more advanced but I mean, there's just some laws, for example, the way construction documents are made and mm -hmm. uh, like legal aspects yes. of being responsible for a treaty model. Yeah. Contracts and lawyers are always going to keep us behind, yeah. but they're always going to lag behind. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is the way it is. But, um, you know, as with anything else, you know, it's time, you know, change takes time. But I do believe that there's a there's a there's a need and a want for it. And I think it's going to be uh, a big push. I mean, you're seeing it even now with. Um, a lot of a lot of the focus on pre, uh, 
prefabrication and modular and all this stuff, right? It's it's a similar approach. Um, you know, if you if you're if you're building chunks of a building in a factory, you know, the, the more um, you know, the more prefabricated things get, the more model based uh, an approach can be, because um, the more you know conditioned the uh, the more controlled the conditions of construction are, you know, and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I think. I think there. I think. I, I think. Um, I think there. There's. There's less of a a a, a restriction than we think when it comes to mm -hmm. laws and contracts. I do think so. As architects, you know, we're taught over time, you know, the the contract law and and our construction documents and all that piece of the AA documents or you know, what is it uh, R R A? What is it in, in Canada? In Canada, yeah. you mean yeah, the, the associations of a. Uh... Well, it, it's uh, yeah. it's different the, for each province here in Quebec. It's okay, the okay. OAQ. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, so whatever the you know architectural associations, mm -hmm. you know, and and, uh, and you know, I we're taught to live and die by those documents. But I do think, mm -hmm. as with any contract, uh, uh, they can be renegotiated, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And, and yeah, I think that in the case of architects, with we're getting sued so much that we're a little paranoid about, you yeah, know, all the yeah. legal I mean, aspects and contracts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to think that the the lawsuits are going to go away regardless of that. Yeah, I know. Silly, I know. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's it's just, not, that's going to change. We're going to get sued either either way. It's just it's part of it. I mean, the same thing. Just in general, across the board. You know, we I always have this argument on the construction side where, um, you know, there for some reason contractors are afraid of errors and omissions insurance and like errors and omissions in general. Um, it's like this plague and I'm like, you guys are builders risk insurance. Like, are you kidding me? I, I'd be way more scared of builders risk than freaking arrows and omissions. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, in, in general, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't, whenever I talk about these things and, and when we talk about people, um, I, I try to, um, you know, think, let's say, let's say the contracts didn't exist and then what would it look like? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> All right, so no more construction document, just models. I think that's, that's it. Model, th model that's based a great future. That's it. Model based I like future, it. man. <laughs> I, I think automation as well. I mean, I think you have the, the guys from TestFit on your show. I was yep. I'm super impressed mm -hmm. with that. I'm, I'm curious to see where that, that kind of processes can be used mm -hmm. uh, elsewhere in architecture. Yeah. Uh, and I think they all tie together. I think uh, all that stuff ties together with mm -hmm. the model based approach. I think the, the automation, the prefab, the modular, you know, all, all that stuff, uh, you know, ties together with a more model based approach to what we do for sure. All right. So I hope we've answered everybody in the chat. I've been keeping a glance, but people have kind of self answered uh, a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's awesome. good. Let's drop for us. Awesome. Uh, it's almost 420. So and let's wrap this up. So it, uh, any final word, anything you want to mention? You've already mentioned your let's let's switch. Yeah, the no, again, so no, th th thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, this was a, a I missed I missed being live mm -hmm. for a little while there. Uh, I look forward to coming back. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going to have you back for sure. Thank you guys for, for tuning in and, and watching me with Nick. Um, if you want to reach out uh, again, you can head on over to peer.bamafterdark.com. But you can also just um, uh, message me or, or follow me on Twitter at the Revit kid. I'm usually pretty active on there and I'm, I'm, uh, always open to chat. So, uh, I hope, I hope, I hope people out there who have reached out to me, find it pretty easy to contact me. So <laughs> I like to, I like to, yes, be I, I think you're not too hard to find. <laughs> awesome, man. So thanks for having me too. I appreciate it, Nick. All right. So just, uh, quickly next week, it's a live show all for beginners. So tell all your beginners friend, uh, to join the name of the session will be 24 beginners tips and strategies it will mostly be about how to start a model revit model the good way so anyway thanks you jeff uh, thanks a lot thanks, and good luck with uh, your kids i hope you do get a chance to sleep <laughs> <laughs> you got it man thanks a lot thanks for having me all right bye bye see you next bye, week everybody everyone.